Which you guys got another video here for you. How to know if a website is safe. This is a question I get quite a bit. And unfortunately, you have to use a lot of common sense and hope that you don't fall foul to a lot of dodgy sites that are out there on the internet. First one to look for is the domain name or URL. If it is misspelt, then it's obviously not a safe site. Scammers will buy domain names that are very similar to popular websites to try and trick people into clicking on them. So the domain name is important. Ensure that domain name is accurate and matches the website's name. Uh, watch out for any sort of misspellings or slight variations. It goes without saying, make sure the site is HTTPS and that is important. HTTPS are more secure. Uh, you know, fake websites will tend to use HTTP sometimes and these are insecure websites. Also, you want to check to make sure the connection is uh, good. So you should see here the connection is secure. You can see a padlock icon there in the address bar or it will be next to the URL. This indicates that the SSL certificate is present and it's encrypting the data transmission. So that's important. So you can check for SSL validation right at the bottom. It tells it's valid. That is also good. You can always check Google's safe browsing site status. This will give you a quick basic check to tell you whether that site is uh, in good working clean order. So let's go ahead and do a quick check here and it will tell us whether the site that we're going to check is safe. And it will just be a basic check. So let me go ahead and do a search for say brightechcomputers.co.uk. So I'm going to type this one out right here and we can then quickly check that domain name to make sure it's okay. So you can see right here, current status, no unsafe content found. That means there's no uh, unsafe content stored on that website. If you were storing malware on that server, then it should detect it. Next, we have Virus Total. This is owned by Google, and this also allows you to scan files. You can see up to 650 megabytes. It used to be only 50 megabytes, but now they've upped it because creators of malware were making them so big that the scanners will just ignore them because the file was too big. So what they've done here now is allowing you to upload up to 650 megabytes of file size to check it to see whether it's safe. Next, we have the URL scan. We can do a search here for my domain name right here, and we'll do brightechcomputers.co.uk and do another quick search. And a lot of antivirus companies will do a search on that website to make sure that site is clean and there is no malicious files or any sort of bad reputation for that particular site. If there is, then you want to steer clear of that site. And if you're one of those people that uh, frequently go to dodgy sites, then you are running the risk. And this is where you run the risk of getting infected on your PC because browsers can get infected. Having a good antivirus, sometimes they will offer you something like this that will protect your browsing experience right here. You can get add-ons or extensions, which we'll talk about in a second, which will also detect uh, dodgy scamming sites url void is another one which is a, a website reputation checker you can quickly check uh, my site right here and this will give you a quick breakdown of the checks that is done so let's go ahead and do another quick scan here you don't need to do all of these on every site you go to because you'll never get anything done but it just breaks it all down and gives you some information Sometimes scammers' domain names have only just been registered. You can do a quick check on those because sometimes they purchase these domain names, put some dodgy scamming stuff up there, and the next thing you know, you, you're the one that falls foul to it. So checking it, if it's a new site, then obviously steer clear of it. Always stay to the trusted manufacturer uh, websites that you trust rather than going to some shady site that you don't know anything about. And don't click on any links in emails and don't open up any attachments or anything like that or receive any sort of executable files from people and don't click on any links in Discord either. So let's quickly upload a file here. You can see it's going to quickly check that file. 
Now, if you've received the file from a trusted source, then the file should be okay. But if you're going to places like GitHub and other places like that on the internet, or using Chocolatey uh, and going to the web store to download add-ons, make sure that you know who these creators are and it's trusted because if it's something you don't know or trust, you can end up getting infected and you definitely don't want that. Now, remember, there is no 100% accurate way of checking websites or even checking files because there is zero day attacks all the time and these do not get detected and you have to be super careful. So this is why you want to know what you're doing. Whether trust has been around for a very long time, it's community based. And basically, I don't rely on things like this so much, but you could, if you're not that familiar with using the internet and you're not that experienced, you can use programs like this to do a search on and it will tell you the reputation of that particular site. You can see this site's got 77% and you can go through and read some of the feedback. And you can tell by some of the uh, comments, which are very old. This means this site has been around for a very long time, and that's more trustworthy than a site that's been up for five minutes. So always check uh, to see whether the site is only like a month or two old. If it is, then it might not be so trustworthy to download files from that site. Make sure you're not clicking on any sort of pop-ups on the screen because these also can get you infected and you definitely don't want to add any sort of add-ons onto the browser when you're downloading stuff. That's definitely a big no-no. Looking at Bitdefender Traffic Light, this is a more reliable one than Web of Trust in my opinion. And if you need something like this on your browser, then you can install it. What it's going to do is when you search the internet, if it's a trusted site, it will come up with a green tick. Now, this is also probably not 100% accurate, but it's a good starting point to give you a good idea of whether that site is trustworthy. So let me just quickly show you uh, what this looks like. We'll do a quick search here, and I'm just going to do a search for Windows 11. And you can see there's a little green tick right there. And that tells me that that site has been checked and it is got a clean bill of health. And it should do because it's Microsoft.com. And it says this page is safe. So let me just show you another one. You can see right here, uh, fraud attempted detected. And this is basically a dodgy site. And as you would expect, going to those sort of sites would not be a good idea. So this can give you a little quick heads up whether the site is trustworthy or not. They're not 100% accurate. And these sites, with the download sites here, you definitely don't want to use those where they're full of download adverts on them saying download, 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 and you click on the wrong one and end up getting infected. Changing the DNS is also a way you can protect yourself. Uh, Quad9 is a, another one that you could use. There's plenty of other ones out there. You can keep it to your ISP's DNS if you want to. Uh, I'm just using my uh, DNS from my ISP. I find it perfectly fine because I'm a bit more experienced at stuff. But if you're not so experienced, you might want to swap it out with something like Quad9 or some of the other ones. If you're trying to block adult content and other nasty stuff on the internet, you can use some of those DNS servers that will block that particular type of stuff. If you're not that tech savvy, you might want to get yourself a better antivirus program. And you can also uh, use things like uh, Gmail or something like that, which is going to be an online-based uh, mail client rather than using say Outlook which is downloading emails onto your computer which gives you a bit more risk if you start clicking on those links inside uh, emails you're going to get yourself infected as well so just use a bit of common sense anyway I think that's going to be about it just a pretty basic simple video here for people that ask the same question on how to know a website is safe or not. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.